Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I'm Dr. Praveen and welcome to our course Cross-Culture Communication. I hope you all will be fine and very anxious and very conscious about your studies. So we are trying our best to facilitate. So first of all, here is a cross-culture communication as you can see the title over there in the uh, upper part of the slides. So cross-culture communication there is a need to discuss about communication first of all what communication is so we can say uh, communication a process by which information are exchanged among individuals through a common system of a symbol signs and behavior so this is called communication next what culture is culture is an umbrella term and it encompasses, it includes all sorts of things related to daily lives, art, music, literature, food, attitudes, values, language, norms, etc. And a culture can be defined as a system in which ideas and customs and social behavior of a particular people or society are exercised. So, what cross-cultural communication could be? What can we define? What way we can define the definition of cross-cultural communication? Simply we can say cross-cultural communication is the communication between people who have differences in their lifestyles, in their jobs, nationality, age, gender, race, ethnicity, etc. So after short definitions of communications, culture, cross-cultural communication, now we move towards a what is a culture. Uh, word culture comes from the Latin word cultura, which is related to cult or worship. In its broadest sense, the term refers to the result of human interaction. Although it seems very odd to discuss about human interaction, the scenario of this coronavirus as we are staying at home and we don't, well, we are not indulged in human interaction we are avoiding it anyhow it's our course requirement so we need to discuss this human interaction or the results of human interaction in what way member of particular society interact with this and what are the manifestation of that human interaction so the culture of society comprises the shared values understandings assumptions and goals that are in goals that are learned from earlier generations imposed by present member of society and passed on to the succeeding generation so what are the shared values and understandings of a particular member of the particular society so what are the shared values as being a muslim or being a pakistani community members we want that our younger children or our younger generation must be uh, honest fair in their dealings they must not tell a lie, they always speak the truth, or they must be sincere, they must be, hey, they must uh, respect their elders or parents. So these are the good values that are shared or almost in every society or in a particular society, among the members of particular society. And then there are assumptions and what we assume and the, and the assumptions means what we what are our expectations from our younger generations and the goals that uh, being uh, Muslims we have different goals uh, in this world and hereafter we believe in Allah Almighty so what are the our goals what could be not only we are concerned about this uh, materialistic world but we have some sort of goals in, in our mind and we are want to prepare ourselves for the life the next after uh, after this or hereafter um, as uh, we are being a Muslim we are answerable to our Allah Almighty for all our actions and deeds so we have these sorts of goals in our mind so these are the shared values and understanding and different assumptions and goals by different community members or that these things 
or values or goals or assumptions that we, our expectations we want, that must be sustained by our younger generation also. That's why we are trained, gotten, um, we are involved in trying to teach or to train our younger children. So they must be, in this way, they also must maintain or sustain these values. In the same way, guidance 2000 defined culture refers to the way of life of the members of society or of group within a society includes how they dress, their marriage, customs, language, and family life, their patterns of work, religious ceremonies, and their pursuits all are different by those are exercised by the members of different society. So what is culture? Culture, again, we are discussing it again and again to get in-depth understanding of this culture. So culture is a way of thinking and living whereby one picks up a set of attitudes, values, norms and beliefs that are taught and reinforced by other members in the group. So set of attitudes or values or norms as we being a Pakistani we have different set of norms or beliefs, beliefs really as I, we have discussed earlier. So we have different beliefs being a Muslims and Indians have different set of beliefs and norms related to their current life or they related to this worldly life and hereafter. And they have different values or likewise different attitudes or different beliefs uh, or a Christian could be, have, be having a different beliefs and norms. So these are the differences, a set of different attitudes, or values, and norms, beliefs that are uh, chosen by the particular member of society. So that this set of basic assumptions and solutions to the problems of the world is a shared system that is passed on from generation to generation to ensure survival. So uh, if we will not do effort, if we will not do endeavor to transfer these shared values or these are the set of attitudes or norms and beliefs, it means our culture will not be sustained anymore and uh, survival of our culture will be uh, in the, at the risk. Next, our culture consists of unwritten and written principles and laws that guide how an individual interacts with the outside world. So uh, we can understand that uh, there could be the two types of principles and laws that are exercised by a particular culture, written and unwritten. What could be the written principle? The written principle, we can see that uh, code of ethics or uh, that are uh, written in for different departments like in the uh, department of education department of health or department other departments banks court we have some sort of code of ethics that we have to maintain all those principles that are set by the authorities or expert people of that particular department or in written principles, uh, what could be else we can include like uh, uh, drinking wine is prohibited in our religion, not only in our religion, it's also prohibited in our society, or gambling, or theft, bribery, all these things are prohibited in our society. So these are the, uh, we can see these are included in the written principles and laws, but some where we can see that there are, we cannot see the written principles, written principles of uh, particular in particular things to deal with other people like we being a Muslims or being a Pakistani community member, we must be, if we are dealing a job, we are indulging a job and we must be punctual, regular or we must be dedicated, sincerity and modesty we also exercise. So these some ethics or rules or laws cannot, we cannot see in a written form but we are doing when we are uh, busy in those uh, laws and principles to show that we are the member of a particular community. And members of a culture can be identified by the fact that they share some similarities. They may be united by religion, by geography, or by race or ethnicity. So, so we, what examples I have given you earlier, like 
drinking wine, bribery, gambling, or these sorts of things, theft. These are the not only by religion. These are the things. These things are prohibited by religion, by our by our Pakistani community or Pakistani national. Being our Pakistani national, we must also be uh, forbade ourselves from these things. Or what are the good values? We must also perform for the good values. Being a Pakistani, being a Muslim, being a Pakistani nation, national, or being a brown people, as we by race we are well known by other community members. So these are the written and unwritten principles. Though sometimes there are some written principles, what about the people who are not educated? They will think about some other elder persons or senior citizens of our city maybe some of them they are not educated very well so if the written principles are over there how could they you know, will be able to understand what could be thought principles so they will observe the other member of the society other member of the society will be observed by those uneducated peoples so they can understand what are the basic rules basic principles and laws for a particular member of the society. Next, culture is the center of a society, and without culture, no society can exist. I think there are no individuals, you cannot find out any persons in a particular culture. So, uh, no society, without any society, uh, nothing could be developed uh, regarding culture. So, there will be no any sort of culture. So it is a heritage transmitted from one generation to another. It includes all the ways and behavior in social life, all the behavior and all the ways that we have discussed so far. Well, like for example, what are those all the ways of behavior in social life? It could be we have discussed in the start of our lecture, like uh, our values, our norms, culture, traditions, attitudes, literature, food art, music, etc. These are the things that are behavior, that could be the behavior in our social life and different people observe those, all those things regarding their social life. So man is a born in, man is born in the environment of a culture in which he seeks his way of behaving and acting in a given society. So what we can understand by this so this is a particular environment or particular culture like for example a person is who is born in American culture or a person who is born in British culture or Indian culture or Bangladeshi culture or Pakistani culture but that could be different from, from the other cultures societies so what a person or a particular person observes he try to imitate he try to act upon according to those things or environment as other people are showing or giving them as an examples definitions of culture some different scholars have defined culture in a different way Edward Taylor Define culture. Culture is this complex whole which includes knowledge, belief, art, morals, law, custom, and any other capabilities and habits acquired by a man as a member of a society. We can say it's an umbrella term. Culture is the umbrella terms and it includes all the mentioned above things. Next, Robert defined culture in a way an organized body of conventional understanding manifested in art and artifact which persisting through their tradition characterizes human growth so this is the organized body of conventional understanding when we are talking about written laws or written principles of a particular society we means we are talking about the organized body of conventional so that is manifested by the people of that particular member L.A. White defined culture is a symbolic continuous cumulative and progressive process so it's a process in which symbols are understand by the community members and it's a continuous process and it's not a one day task to development of a culture when you talk about the development of a culture things 
long, long time. It takes. It's not a one-day task. So maybe it's gonna take. It will take time of for months, years, or centuries even. And it's a ongoing process. It's a dynamic process. Next, elements of culture. What are the elements of culture? We will discuss uh, very short, in short detail. So number one is their symbols. Symbols are those illustrations that are used to represent a particular meaning of something that people who share the same culture can easily recognize. It means it. Uh, we can say a person who does who does not belong to the same community or same community or he is he belongs to a different culture maybe it's very difficult to understand those symbols easily so these are the interpretations and these have some hidden meanings or that the particular members of the society can understand otherwise the rest of the people maybe there's a difficulty to understand all those symbols so for example uh, to show a thumb if i'm if there is a face-to-face -face class i can show you here there's a restricted features of this uh, video recording i cannot show you so, so show uh, to show a thumb to your audience or the people who are sitting in front of you it means in our culture uh, it's no, it's uh, international. According to the international, then now they will even you boost up the confidence, and you want to encourage other people who are sitting before you or an individual. You show your thumb, keep it up. But uh, as I can remember in my childhood, it was not a good sign. Yeah, I have I had observed in my childhood it was not a very good sign to show a thumb. Being it was like uh, abuse to someone. So. These are the different symbols or other facial expressions or gestures or body language. These have some uh, different interpretations by the different community members. So this is one element of a culture. Next thing is the language. Uh, a language is the system of symbols that permit people to communicate with one another. They could be symbols or they could be words or they could be sign language or etc or different community members have different languages in which they communicate each other or one another or they interact with other people by using that particular language next there is a value culturally defined principle of a desirability goodness beauty and many other things that serves as broad garden for social living or set of uh, principles or what sort of principle desirable principles or what could be the desirable principle that could be goodness or beauty or sincerity or dedications or chastity modesty these are the values and overall these are the values and all community members of no matter which culture culture they belong to all community members all Mm, throughout the world these are the good values and these are liked by all throughout the world by all people so next there is the beliefs certain words that people hold to be true like uh, beliefs of uh, muslims or beliefs of uh, uh, hindu or beliefs of uh, uh, christian or any other community members could be different because being a muslim we have beliefs in allah almighty he is our creator or we are passing these days or this uh, current life uh, and we are here to prepare our next day life our future life and future life means the life after death so we have belief in allah almighty and he is omnipresent he's uh, watching us and he's observing all our actions and deeds or we believe in one allah almighty one god but there are some different beliefs being a hindu they have beliefs or they have believe in different gods more than one so many many gods they have different god or goddess they believe on those god and goddess and likewise christian they have some different beliefs or creeds according to their religion like there is the norms rules and expectations by which a society directs the conduct of its member 
especially the younger generations or maybe adult generation what are our expectations what we want our society or members of our society must observe all those things and you must exercise according to those expectations and they must not do violation of all those expectations or rules or set rules of our norms traditions and culture there are some other important elements of culture like language and we have discussed different jargons and metaphors what are the jargons it's a new term maybe some of you do not know about this yeah, new terms or new concept jargons jargon we can understand that uh, these are the particular terminology or particular wording or terminology used by expert of that particular profession for example in medical field or there are some different fields and they are in medical field we can say the doctor will use the words physical exam or heart murmur or treatment these are the different words used by the doctor or nurses in the hospitals or in their clinics when they are so these are the different or maybe some complicated terminology that cannot be understood by other people maybe even a teach a doctor or nurse or the two different two different doctors will talk about about the about any patient or about the situation any disease of a patient maybe they use that different terminology and metaphors also could be the elements of uh, a particular culture different metaphors are being used or in different uh, like in different uh, communities and uh, different stories and myths and legends or ceremonies and celebrations these are the different elements that could be the part of culture in all different cultures every culture has its own unique patterns of behavior which seems alien to people from other cultural backgrounds when you travel to a different country you usually get different sensation and feeling because most of what you see here and even eat can be very different from what you do in your own country here i can remember i want to give you my own example in 2013 when me and my husband we got admission in phd in university of tara malaysia and when we we went over there and uh, we were sitting in a restaurant we asked them for a cup of we asked for two cups of tea and when tea was offered to us and we were surprised to see there there was a ice in the tea and really we were in sort of we were worried what could we do when with that uh, iced tea because we were not accustomed to drink iced tea because every time in our home country we take uh, hot tea not cold tea so we were very surprised and after that we came to know that when there are two types of tea that is available on the restaurants when cold tea or iced tea and we need to explain we mean to need to give explanation to uh, explanation to the shopkeeper whether we need uh, hot tea or cold tea so these are the different things that we can observe when we are in a different culture likewise in a different many many different things we can find in a different way when we are when we cross the border of our country so aspects of your daily lifestyle which you unconsciously take for granted in your own culture may not be part of everyday life in other parts of the world so think in country we share the same language and the habits customs and behavior may be quite different sometimes people feel disoriented when they become immersed in a new culture and this is because they have lost the familiar reference points which help them understand the world around them and have not yet learned how to navigate in the new culture so people from uh, developing or underdeveloped countries when they go abroad to towards develop developed countries they feel uh, in some sort of inferiority complex that we are inferior and the people of those countries you know native people of those areas they are superior to us so they want to change their lifestyles and they want to adopt their customs and traditions and they also want to be same as the native people are they want to hide their identity or their area or their land or their uniqueness from which from which they belong to so this is not a good thing 
why we must hide our identity we are different because we are a member of a unique culture and we are member of a culture that is not part of their life so there must be some sort of differences and this difference we must take for granted not for uh, inferiority complex that we are different and we must be the same as they as the native people are maybe <coughs> okay this is the end of our today's uh, lecture next uh, in our next uh, lecture we will discuss some characteristics of a culture and different other relevant aspects of a culture next there is a assignment i have written assignment number 1 in which you have to prepare a list of at least three different cultures related to the following elements of a culture here are the following elements like language jargon metaphor stories myths legends ceremonies and celebrations at least there must be three different culture and you can select at national level or international level like at national level there here i have explained you can see uh, punjabi culture pashto culture or sindhi culture you can select these three different cultures and you must write down or you must uh, give some account or detailed account about language jargons and metaphors or these all these elements related to these punjabi culture or pashto culture or sindhi culture or next you can select at international level or american british or indian whatever here is just example you can see the example at you it will be carrying 10 marks i hope you understood very well assignment number 1 okay goodbye allah hafiz assalam alaikum